Okay, so the next talk will be given by Tarek on um, submodular disorder. Thank you for organizing this workshop and having it here. Um, I will talk about uh, some other facility locations, uh, joint work with some number of people. There's essentially two groups. Uh, there's our group from Kratzwa, includes uh, Marek, who, who's here with us. And there's a group of uh, Fabrizio Grandani from Lugano. Um, so it, it's one of those classical problems. If you start from standard facility location where you have this bipartite graph of, of uh, clients and facilities, you want to select the subset of facilities, assign clients. So in the most standard setting, the clients would, would pay the budget, uh, the, the travel distance to a facility, Plus, in this most standard model, the, there is this uh, location-specific uh, fee for, for opening facility in this location. So you can view our problem as a generalization of that. Uh, so just let's recall what's, what's a sub model of function. So it's a set function that, uh, that takes a subset that gives a number. And there are like two different definitions. Uh, so the, the economic definition is that uh, including one more element in a bigger set gives you like a lower increase in cost than if you would include it in a bigger set. I did a with this. Um, so now we can uh, we can specify a slightly more a general uh, objective function with these modular functions. So the idea is that uh, when you assign a set of clients to a single location, then, then the cost of serving these clients is now not just the cost of, of, of buying the location, but it's now a function of what clients are you serving. And uh, in, in this model, we, we model pretty general uh, cost functions that, that uh, Right, that, that, that just take the, the, the set of clients. And so here you can see uh, we, are, we are computing this assignment of clients to facilities. Uh, that's, that's just the distance the clients travel. And here we look at uh, uh, the, the locations of facilities and then we look at what set of clients is being served at, at this location. And, uh, um, and, and we just compute the, the function uh, the cost function of this set of clients. That, that's, that's the whole problem definition. You, you could think that, that the function value of the M27 is zero, so, so, so the unused facility data. So there's a G function and uniform for all facilities. Right, right. right. That's, that's, a, that's a very good question. So, uh, so there was some, the most relevant uh, 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 related work is by Sutkino and Tadosh. Who, uh, who studied the problem before. So they, they studied, uh, so one thing they studied the extreme where there would be multiple functions, but that very easily models set cover. So I, I consider it less interesting for, for our studies. But what they also did is they considered the case with a single function, but also pretty structured single function that that's, uh, that originates from, from a certain hierarchy uh, modeled by a single tree. So for, for this specific class of functions, they got the constant factor approximation, the, the, the 4.237. And that was a uh, local search algorithm analyzed with the use of the structure of this function. Um, so what we will be doing is we will study problem in between. So we think the right model is to consider a single sum of the function, but not restricted function. So it you can think of it as uh, this function is, is not related to the location, but it's rather about the specifics of some subset of clients. Do they match together well or not? Okay, so, so such uh, for such a problem, it, uh, it is a, an open problem if there exists a constant factor approximation algorithm. So our main contribution is to get a log log n approximation. So we go down from, from logarithm, but uh, okay, but it's still not clear if you can get a constant. We are not solving it completely. 
Um, we also get some results for variants. So we can slightly generalize the setting. Uh, we can have location specific multiplicative constants uh, in front of this uh, the similar function and still get the log log n. Uh, or alternatively, we can have location specific additive constants to the cost. Perhaps most interesting of this point is the last one. So that in the literature, uh, you can find some people studied stochastic versions of the problem where you need to upfront assign clients to facilities, but, but you don't know which of these clients will actually need a service. What we, what we know upfront is just uh, some probability distribution of the scenarios, the scenarios being such that the clients that actually need the service. And you can, it's not too hard to see that it actually reduces to the submodel of case because when you look into the probability of a facility being needed as, as a function of what clients are being assigned, it's actually a submodular function of the set of clients being assigned. So under some mild technical uh, assumptions about the, the marginal probabilities, we, we still get what we get approximation for that. Okay. Um, we will be studying a natural uh, LP relaxation of the problem, which is a configuration LP. So here we can sit, we have variables for sets of clients and individual locations. And the interpretation is that indeed this set of clients is set from this particular location. And uh, so, so here we just pay for, for the facility cost and and this is trans way to write the transportation cost. Um, nothing uh, non standard here. Um, this LP can be, it's a large LP exponential size, but it can be solved uh, via Lavash extension. So, so we can use fractional solutions to, uh, to this LP. And now let me give you an overview of the steps of. Our algorithm takes. So, so we solve the configuration of the first. Then we sample some configurations. Um, by sampling, I mean we, we, we compute like partial solution that, that already assigns the, the clients that are sampled, that, that are covered by, by these sampled configurations. Then, after we do so, we kind of reduce the instance to. to we get the residual instance with a smaller number of clients. What we do, we, we embed the metric right, for the remaining set of clients. We embed it into a tree. Um, and afterwards, we use some uh, some techniques in empty rounding, the, 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 some filtering to, to, to get rid of the objective function to, to, to make it a feasibility problem. And in the end, there's some um, LP rounding to, 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 to solve the feasibility problem. So I, I will I will now discuss it. So so the sampling that we are doing, um, the way I like thinking about it is, is that there's, there's some number of rounds that there's log log and many rounds. And in a single round, you your sample configuration proportionally well, actually, with probability equal to, to the fractional variable. So the effect of that is that, uh, well, you spend that much on the cost of the configurations that, uh, that, are, uh, that are sampled. But, but more importantly, and the, the, the tricky part is that, uh, that you get rid of some fraction of the clients. So, you, you, you can show that the probability for a client that it remains uncovered after that many iterations of sampling, that it is one over logarithm. It's not deep mathematics, but it, so we are removing most of the clients in, the, in this pre-processing sampling phase, and we are left with a small number of clients. Okay, and after we do that, uh, we embed uh, the metric of, of the remaining instance into a tree. So that so the effect of 
so so we we chose a randomized uh, random hierarchy hierarchically well separated tree um, so we get the structure of a tree but there's a blow up in terms of the cost so so distances can stretch but it's a logarithmic blow up but 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 it nicely combines with that we killed most of the clients up front so so, so now you can kind of expect the distance as being large by a multiplicative factor of a logarithm, but a single client only survives with a probability one of a logarithm, which cancels out. So we get a three instance um, with uh, with a connection cost that that's that's roughly the optimal cost that, that we started with. Okay. And uh, now we will be rounding on a tree. So, so we, we got to a tree metric. And uh, so now I would like to tell you what, what, what we do for the filtering. So these numbers, I don't know if they're readable for you. But, 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 but think of the assignment of a client to facilities as, as, as a unit flow from this client to, to, to different location facilities. And you, you can measure this, this flow on, on, on the edges of the tree. And uh, we'll, we'll find the moment when, when this flow um, crosses the threshold of one half. And uh, so we will say that, that this client in the fractional solution, he can accept distances of roughly that range. So the, so the fractional solution pays for these costs because half of the flow was going up that much so 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 you can think that this this client can can travel that much and pay proportionally to the fraction solution so, so in some sense he can go up and then he can go down so, so you can think that up to a constant factor of blow up in the, in the cost this client would be comfortable to to to, to be served from within this this tree so okay uh, yes so your previous LP, this configuration LP, basically now you are looking at it from a client perspective and you're you're just saying, you know, how much of this, you're converting it into a, like a standard client facility. And... Right, right, right. So, so my, my, my configuration LP don't have these, these flow variables, but, 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 but you can... Uh... In a natural way. <laughs> but... but, but... But then it gives you assignments. So you can measure how much client is assigned. And uh, on a tree, there's this, this unique way of routing it. So, so there's this unique way of putting this flow. OK, so, so for every client, we find its scale in this, this hierarchically well separated tree. And what we will later do is we will make sure that he gets serviced from within this, this tree. And we we call it uh, descendant leaf assignments. It, it's just a name for, 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 for the feasibility problem that there's like. Okay. And uh, and now we will utilize something not not we developed, but but it was uh, Neil Olver and his student uh, Osman. They, they, they studied a similar problem. It, they, they, they also had a tree, but, but they, they constructed tree from time. We have tree from space, but, the, but we discovered that, that what they are solving is essentially what, what, what we need now. So, so they got a, run, uh, a rounding algorithm for, for such LPs on trees with uh, with a log log n factor. And uh, I will try to sketch it to you. So, so, so here it's not our contribution, we just observed that it works what we did. But, but I, will, I will sketch to you what, what the mechanics of that. Um, right. So we will be, uh, so now we think that the clients sit uh, like in the middle trees and for facilities down there and we, uh, we need to make a decision. Uh, should I serve this client from a particular facility down, down, down here in the leaves? And we will be making this decision going uh, bottom up. 
so so we focus on a single single node of the tree, and we will try to to run the fractional solution that we currently have. Um, and when you look into this single node, um, the fractional solution gives you um, so some distribution of the sets of clients that are served in, in this node fractionally. But 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 because it's a submodular function, this uh, these sets they form a chain. Um, so so you can now think of uh, thresholding to find a uh, right subset in the chain. So so think of it this way. So so we 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 consider these different values for uh, for this theta between zero and one, this is a threshold. And we consider seven clients that are served by a fractional solution at least that much. And I consider this graph as being the cost in terms of this modular function, the cost of serving this set of clients that, that, that's defined by, by, the, by the threshold. So, so the larger the threshold, the smaller the set, the, the, the lower the cost, but but you don't know what what will be the shape of this curve. So so Bosman and Olva they, they have a very nice technical lemma that's uh, that's depicted here that that actually you can that there's some dichotomy that one of the two alternatives will be true. So what what's the left alternative? The left alternative is that this picture is somehow fat here. And that means that we can select the threshold here and we will intuitively pay the light blue rectangle. That, that, that means that's, that's the cost of, uh, of those elements uh, up, up to here, we, we, we round up the cost. Mm. But if we do so, uh, think of like iterative rounding process, you could imagine using this configuration to get rid of these clients and observe how much cheaper the remaining instance is. So, so the dark blue is how much cheaper is the remaining fractional solution out of this operation. Okay, so, so, so one option is that we find such a theta that, uh, that, that this um, dark blue will be a substantial portion of the light blue. Then, then, then we do it and we continue. But there's an alternative. This, this could be such a curve, like an exponential curve, where that doesn't have this, this, this nice uh, in property. But then uh, what, you, what you see that, that we can actually take this set uh, of those clients that are integrally served there, so like the, the smallest possible set. And we, we don't have a guarantee that, that, that we make a progress on the fractional solution by choosing this. But uh, then we have a guarantee that, that this, the cost of this set is very small compared to the total cost of the fractional solution. And here, we don't have the analysis locally per node out of the tree, but rather, but rather globally, we, we say that, 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 that we pay here this small amount, but even if we pay it on a logarithmic number of levels, it's still not to be compared to the, the, the global fraction of solution. So, so this is something, okay, so this dichotomy says that, that either there's a set, a larger set for which I can locally pay, or there's no such set, but I have to pay, I have to buy some set for, uh, for serving those, uh, those, those clients that, that definitely need to be served, but, but, but they are relatively cheap and there will be just a logarithmic number of levels in, in, in which uh, I will need to pay it. So, so somehow in total, it, it will be not so bad. So I'm, okay. So yeah, where is the logarithmic number of levels can come in point number two? Okay, it comes from the, the, the tree, so you can think you you could pay it on a uh, 
like 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 on a path in the tree. So okay, so, so our algorithm will like resolve layer by layer, and uh, if we mm, if we use this second part of the analysis, then on, on the single layer you pay something, but there's no progress in terms of the cost of the remaining solution. But there's a progress in terms of uh, one layer of the tree disappearing. So. Right, so the, it cannot happen to all. Okay, so that was the, repeating the the the, the upper Postman trick. So 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 now just 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 to put things together. So so we remove some number of clients by 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 pre-processing. Then uh, we build uh, hierarchically separate separable tree. And uh, somehow these, these two points, they nicely combine um, in the sense that, that they blow up in, in, the, in the length of, of the paths over the tree. It's compensated by, by, by the smaller number of clients using it. Uh, so in, interestingly, it, it plays nicely if we are okay with this log log n factor. Like, like you, you cannot build constant factor algorithms with that, but but with log log n, apparently that that, that works, and that it, it was a bit of a surprise for us that, that these two things combine nicely. And after that, we we do some LT rounding with 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 some tools that we're seeing before in, in, in different works. We just we just wrap the work together. So I can talk about some open questions now. So of course, the, the submodel of facility location problem, it's still open, does there, is there exist, does there exist a constant factor approximation or not? It's a big question. Uh, I suggest it to you if you like it. Um, well, actually we don't know uh, how to do it on three instances. So our algorithm first reduces to trees. We use the, lose the log log n factor, but then uh, we also our algorithm on trees again loses log log n factor. I mean they do it additively, so it's, it's not multiplicative. But, uh, but 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 even if you give me this problem on trees, I still don't know how to how to get a constant factor. And I think this is particularly annoying. Like a problem on trees should be simple. Uh, and we don't know how to do that. Um, and I, I told you we can slightly generalize the objective. So we can add location specific additive factor or, or location specific multiplicative factor. One of the two works with our method. But if you want to add both, we would call it fine version, then our method doesn't work. So that's already like a tiny extension and we don't know how to do it. Okay, so, so these are like uh, appealing uh, special cases that if you would like to work on. But, uh, but I, I wanted to share with you uh, one, one more open question that uh, Sukartik was, uh, was saying that, that, that we should emphasize if something was conceptualized here. So I conceptualized one open question uh, here. It's like a clustering objective. Um, so you could think we have distances. Uh, okay, so, so you can think we have these clients and facilities like, like you know, the, like the most clustering thing, uh, problems. We have metric space uh, and there will be metric costs of, uh, of, uh, of putting uh, objects together. But think there's additional uh, structure that's, uh, that's Okay, so our motivation to put things together would be some kind of friendship relationship. So, so think we are given an input graph like in correlation clustering. So this would be the plus edges of the correlation clustering. Think they are given to you as input. And uh, so I would like to minimize the sum of two costs. That is the distances of the assignment, that's one cost. And the second is the, the broken positive edges. And I think it's a pretty natural objective. Interestingly, it's a special case of some model of facility location because the, the cut function in the friendship graph 
that gives you some modular function. So uh, already what I told you applies here to local depth. But I believe actually that there is uh, there is a simpler algorithm that, that that will give you a uh, a constant factor approximation for uh, for this model by just sampling configurations from the from the configuration of the probably not optimal factor but but but, but some constant I I believe you can get okay I want to to advertise this this model final advertisement. We are organizing an info conference in Poland first week of July. We are all welcome to, to, to attend. Uh, if you could consider sending your students, there will be summer school with these fantastic invited speakers, Sophie Mio and Bira. And there's still some time before the early registration, which is by the end of March. So there, there's a question on the chat about local search. Well, we don't have any results for, for, for local search. So I, I, I know local search is a powerful tool, and uh, then this is speaking about the algorithm was local search. So uh, I can imagine local search can work for slightly more general objects. So, so it's completely open. Does local search solve the big problem? I just don't know how to do this. Any other questions? So in your friendly clustering model, the second term is unweighted. You just want it to count the total number of cut edges and nothing else. I think I can make it weighted, and then that the sampling algorithm will, will work for the weighted version. But will I, I, now I think I didn't write anything, but, but and I think actually by comparison to the to the uh, correlation clustering, where uh, where the constant approximation factor is only known for the unweighted case, so 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 here we can we can make the the weighted friendship graph and. Uh, and also these distances are somewhat more complicated than, than, than the unweighted minus edges. I, I, I'm hoping this is a bit more expressive than, than the unweighted version of correlation plus. So maybe adding my colleagues to constraints or knapsack constraints to this or that on something. To some other supervision. Um, not me personally. Uh, I'm I'm more focused on trying to fight the complexity down to the constant factor, but but I can imagine you could you could try to add constants and, and I mean like, there's almost medium that like it would still get constants, right? So I was just wondering if like that you would still get like a log log input with your approach. It, it will be sensitive to that. So I think it wouldn't be straightforward to, to, to do that. But it could maybe be done by, by some more advanced methods, but, but I think what, what, what we studied wouldn't work just right. So specifically, actually, it's easy to think. Right, right. Most of these problems would be easy in the trees. So is it anything? I mean, you know, are this for some support with the tree? Is that the tree? I have no idea what's the concept. What's that? Like, it's a longer function too, but, but is it generative? So, so we are handling general some functions, but uh, right, you're asking question what, what's what's the, like the minimal hard instance of number three, right? I, I, I don't have any intuition for, for why we cannot solve it on the three. It, right, right, we, we are trying to work on it still. Inviting some students and then like more people, but that is we are stuck. So you could one time solve it exactly as possible. I don't know any empty harness proof, but but we can also say so like uh, um, we have it on the screen, but actually Neil had it or something that would be more like a lab. So as as Alex said, we use it on the screen and 
he was using this other type. And we could assign like facilities of the customer to our type, so they had to take the the line. So already there, it was, you know, they just have this like very, you know, not sure the wrong procedure, you know, the type would you and so on. Further questions off line. Sorry to speak with you.